Hey guys and welcome to this new Arabic lesson with me Maha. Today I'm going to teach you how to become or to sound polite while speaking Arabic. Before we start with the lesson, I want to make sure you are a subscriber to this channel. Please make sure to subscribe and to turn on the notifications. Please also leave a comment below if you like this lesson, if you have suggestions, some doubts, some question or some request for a lesson that you would want me to do. And I want you also to follow me on Instagram at Maha Yaqub where I share daily vlogs, some quizzes, Arabic related things, and also like my Facebook page at Learn Arabic with Maha, one word only. Without further ado, let's start with the lesson. The sentences or the words that I'm going to teach you in this lesson are sentences that I'm slowly, slowly teaching my daughter to use because she would sharply tell me, give me the key or close the door. I'm trying to tell her to say, per favore, or like, please. And it came to my mind that there are a lot of ways to transform your speech into a polite speech, which results very nice and gentle. So I thought this is a good idea for a lesson. And that's why I decided to do this lesson today. So let's begin with the fact that we can add some certain words either at the beginning or at the ending of our sentence or request in order to make them more polite. Of course, this works in the majority of languages, so it's not something new. I didn't just simply discover America. Understanding English, they might result like, okay, banal and normal. But in addition to that, I'm going to teach you also a lot of super, super and exclusively used in Arabic expressions in order to sound and be and become more polite. Let's begin. Let's start with the most basic MSA or modern standard Arabic way to say please. In Arabic, it's min fadlika. Min fadlika. I'm going to try to use one example with all of them and see how they differ, okay? Min fadlika is an expression that we would add at the ending of the request usually, but also we can start with it as a way of saying, excuse me, and then the request. So min fadlika. Min fadlika. Literally, it means of or out of your fadl. Fadl means favor. So if you would please or if you would do me this favor and then the request, okay? Min fadlika. Let's try to pronounce it first. Min fadlika. And if you're talking with a female, min fadliki. For example, a'tini al-muftah min fadlika. A'tini, give me al-muftah. Or if you want al-miftah, same thing. A'tini al-miftah min fadlika. Min fadlika, a'tini al-miftah. A'tini, give me al-miftah, the key. Give me the key. It's much better to say min fadlika a'tini al-miftah or a'tini al-miftah min fadlika rather than just simply saying a'tini al-miftah. And that's what I'm trying to teach my daughter, just to add these small <laughs> sentences, min fadlika or min fadliki. And it's so beautiful and so pol it comes really polite out of her mouth because she's such a little kid, she's four years old, and she's already trying to add these modern standard Arabic expressions into her dialect speaking. So they sound really cute. So too cute. <laughs> when she tells me something, a sentence like Atini miftah yamma, and then she adds min fadlik. It's so beautiful. So first one is adding min fadlika or min fadliki. And if you're talking to a lot of people, you're asking them to give you the key, min fadlikum ka ki and come, it transforms your whole request into a polite way to asking it. The second one is لو سمحت. لو سمحت. Let's work on the pronunciation first. There's a ha. لو سمحت. لو سمحت. لو سمحت. And if you are a female, لو سمحت. It's a sentence that is added again towards the ending of the request. Sometimes you can add it at the beginning again to in order to ask for the attention of the pe person you're talking to. لو سمحت. If, if you'd please, أعطيني المفتاح. Okay? لو سمحت. لو سمحت. Literally, it means if. لو is just like a conditional. If. سمحت, it means you permit. So if you'd permit me, can you open the door? Can you give me the key? Can you help me with this exercise? لو سمحت. Let's try the same example. أعطيني المفتاح لو سمحت. Or لو سمحت. أعطيني المفتاح. ساعدني لو سمحت. Sa'idni, it means help me. Sa'idni is just one verb, one word. Sa'idni, you help me. Sa'idni, instead of saying Sa'idni, Sa'idni, Sa'idni لو سمحت. Or get him his attention. لو سمحت, Sa'idni. You can even combine. لو سمحت, Sa'idni من فضلك. Okay, you can even add more politeness to your request by combining both. Another way to sound more polite is by adding the word mumkin. Mum. 
كن or رجاء أن رجاء أن رجاء أن literally it means as a favor and ممكن it is possible or is it possible it's changing the intonation ممكن so for example if you're at a restaurant and you'd like a cup of water uh, ممكن كأس ماء ممكن كأس ماء is it possible a cup of water it means is it possible for me to have a cup of, wa cup of water or would you please bring me a cup of water ممكن كأس ماء ممكن كأس ماء لو سمحت Oof. It really enriches your whole speech and it makes it even more and more polite. And you know the Arabs like to exaggerate, so it's not a problem. Exaggerate, do it. Mix between these expressions and add them one to another. It makes it better, okay? <laughs> Exaggeration is the key and when it comes to Arabic and Arabs in general. ممكن تعطيني كأس ماء Now here I'm mixing between a dialect, so the spoken Arabic, and the MSA, which is the modern standard, the real classical Arabic. Okay, when you speak, you will need some words that are used from the dialects. That's why I'm trying to give you a language to teach you, a language that you can use, and not only a language that you can read in books and like uh, poetry and whatever. I need, and I have to, and I want, and that's my goal, is to teach you the Arabic that you can speak. Okay, correct Arabic, MSA, but also a, like a, a, mo a modernized version of what you can speak and what all Arabs can understand you. And the other one that I uh, told you is Raja'an. Raja'an. Raja'an is just like Afwan. It's a way to ask the attention of somebody. Afwan or Raja'an. Raja'an is like um, a favor. Literally, it means a favor. So Raja'an. أعطيني كباية ماي. Or أعطيني كباية ماي. Raja'an. Imagine you are at a restaurant and you want to ask for the bill. How do you ask for the bill or the check? How to say check please in Arabic? You can say it by using the word al-hisab, which means the bill, the check, and then adding one of these polite expressions. So, al-hisab min fadlika works perfectly. Al-hisab lo samahat works fantastically. <laughs> I don't know if you can say fantastically. Um, mungkin al-hisab. Is it possible to have al-hisab and enrich it with ممكن الحساب من فضلك ممكن الحساب لو سمحت رجاء الحساب من فضلك or الحساب رجاء and then عفوا ask the attention الحساب من فضلك or عفوا الحساب it can be accepted but remember what Maha told you exaggerate add more politeness in order to become polite. So, uh, <laughs> عفوان, get the attention. الحساب من فضلك. Or, عفوان, ممكن الحساب لو سمحت. <laughs> Now I'm going to teach you words that don't exist in English or in other languages. As far as I know, like in Italian, they don't work. Uh, I'll give you some examples, okay? I think they might work in German that I know and, and in English, no. Okay, let's see them. This word, حضرتك. Or hadratuki, if you're a female, it means literally your presence. Like sim similar to saying your highness, but of course it's not your highness, not for kings, nor queens, nor your royalty. It's just a polite way or a formal way to address people that we're talking to. Imagine I'm talking with um, with my professor at the university. If I'm speaking proper and correct Arabic, I wouldn't, like if I want to ask him, where are you from? Where are you from in Arabic? It's min aina anta. Min aina anta. This means, where are you from? Min means from, aina, it means where, and anta means you. Min aina anta, it means, where are you from? We have, a word that is hadratuka, which means your presence. And this is an alternative to using the uh, subject pronoun. So instead of saying you by saying anta, I have to uh, switch it with hadratuka. So the whole sentence, where are you from, becomes where are your highness from, or min aina hadratuka. So where are you from? Min aina hadratuka, instead of anta, which means you, directly you, it makes the whole speech much more polite and more sophisticated and formal in general. Another polite word that you can add to your speech in, in some kind of um, business setting or formal setting is the word ustav and ustada. Ustav means, can mean two things. It can mean mister in this situation, but it also means a professor or a, a teacher. Instead of calling somebody his name, you can add ustad before it. Ustaz Muhammad, okay? Ustaz Muhammad, it makes it more formal, 
more polite to address the person that's called Muhammad by uh, using Ustaz Muhammad. Remember, it's only in um, uh, for people who have like some high rank uh, social status or uh, in more formal situations, not like just common and, and people that we're well acquainted with, we wouldn't call them Ustaz, but only in formal and business setting, let's call it. You can use Ustaz and the name or Ustaz and the name. Imagine you meet somebody in the street and you want to be polite to them but you don't know their name so you don't necessarily have to put the name afterwards. You can say شو اسمك أستاذ? What is your name mister in this situation? Okay, I'm asking شو اسمك أستاذ? Huh? So شو اسمك أستاذ is I'm talking to you but instead of saying شو اسمك sharply and really ugly just what is your name? شو اسمك أستاذ? Even if you are not much older than me but you are of you're somebody that I'm not well acquainted with, so it's better to tell, to talk to you, addressing you with this polite word, Ustaz. Okay, I hope you, I hope, maybe I repeated it too much, but I hope you understood it. If you didn't, I'll, <laughs> I'll answer you in the comments below. The last expression that I'm going to teach you, it comes from my dialect and from my spoken situations in uh, the Palestinian dialect, Chami dialect, the dialect that is spoken in uh, Syria, Lebanon, uh, Palestine, Palestine and Jordan. We use a lot brother and sister. Again, it's, it's, yeah, it makes our speech more polite to address somebody as uh, Khaya or Khayta. Um, Khaya means bro, brother. Okay, Khaya, it comes from Akh in the standard Arabic. You can also use it in standard Arabic by saying Akhi. Mm? Saidni ya Akhi, help me brother. You're in the street, you have a problem with the car. Saidni ya Akhi. That's proper Arabic, standard Arabic, but we use it a lot, much more in the spoken uh, dialect, uh, especially in my dialect. Uh, Akhi becomes Khaya. Mm? Khaya means a brother of mine, and Khayta means a, bro a sister of mine. Now, they don't necessarily have to be your brothers and sisters to call them Khayya and Khayta, of course, like in English and in some other languages, but it's a very beautiful way to make these people feel like a family member, to feel closer to you, and it's a way also to transform your speech in, into a polite speech. Okay, I'm at a restaurant. So we can repeat the sentences that I taught you and you can work on them, and they are useful. This is more common, very polite but more common like between people of the same age okay it, it really familiarizes the whole situation and makes it more like warm okay and and involving you are not just like the waitress you're khayta and the same with ma males uh, uh, maybe i'm making this lesson very very long much longer but i want to add one last i promise one last word these are called by the way, maybe they're called honorific expressions, but I don't want to categorize them. Anyways, if I, I taught you the example now of Khayta and Khayya, brother, sister and brother, if people are not your same age, you can't say Khayta to uh, an elderly woman, like a 60 year old woman. I can't tell her Khayta because it doesn't work. I'm 30 and she's 60. It doesn't work. But what we use is so beautiful. And may, I might end up like having a full teaching you a full lesson about this. I'm looking at the birds, by the way, because it's beautiful. I try to give you to show you later. So if I want to address a person, instead of transforming this, the whole speech into very formal, as I told you, using hadratuka and hadratuki, your highness, huh? your presence, um, but you want to keep it familiar but polite, and you're talking to a much older lady or, or man, if it's a lady, we usually use the word khalti. Khalti comes from the word khala, which means aunt. Hmm? Khalti. Khalti. Kif halik khalti? Uh, I'm passing by a woman who's selling grape leaves in Jerusalem. I always say marhaba khalti. Uh, marhab, I, <laughs> marhaba khalti. Hi, auntie. Okay, so I'm, I'm giving her, I'm being very much polite instead of saying marhaba. Okay, marhaba is also polite, but marhaba khalti, it's very much, much more cute and involving and I'm making her, her feel like part of my family and uh, for people that are males that are older you can call them ammi ammi means my uncle you might think why isn't isn't it khali it can also be khali but that's a different lesson if it's not my age a little bit older khalti auntie and ammi uh, uncle Okay, I hope you will insert these expressions and, and words that I taught you in this lesson. This way you will show that you are learning Arabic, you're getting into the culture. Because the, the one 
reason for these videos are not only grammar lessons I don't want to teach you only boring grammar because there is another <laughs> uh, place to do that I love to include you and and get you closer to my culture and if I teach you culture you get more involved in the language and get more in love into learning the whole language so I hope you like them if you like them please make sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions any suggestions any video that you want me to teach I will make sure to teach it leave your comment below subscribe to my channel follow me on Instagram at Mahayakub and follow me on uh, my Facebook page we're almost 100,000 people on Facebook page so learn Arabic with Maha one word I want to thank my patrons I want to say thank you to Omar uh, thank you to Kafir, to Joshua, Laura and Craig and Colin and Jamal and Miriam and Dylan and Michael thank you so much for becoming my patrons for supporting my project for supporting my teaching uh, in general and that's <laughs> I have to stop speaking now because I have a lot of other videos to make so thank you for watching and I'll see you in a following I'll be glad to meet you